Yesterday, we talked about Jalen Carter as an option with the number nine pick for the Chicago Bears. Today, we're talking about Bijan Robinson. Welcome into Bears Now by Chat Sports. I am Harrison Graham. Should the Bears not be ruling out Bijan, and should Bears fans potentially expect Bijan to be a Chicago Bear? Wouldn't go that far, but Daniel Jeremiah, NFL draft analyst for NFL Network, says that Bijan could be an option for the Bears at number nine overall. Here's what he had to say on Peter Schrager's podcast this season with Peter Schrager. He says, somebody told me don't sleep on Bijan Robinson with the, Chica with the Chicago Bears at number nine. And let me just get this out there right away. I'm not closed off on Bijan. I had a mock draft uh, go out while uh, I was on paternity leave uh, of drafting Bijan Robinson. I can't remember. I think it was in a trade down scenario. And that's kind of becoming a common theme for me with a lot of these guys linked to the Bears. Like, I don't mind them at nine. I would love them, though, at like 14, 15, 17 uh, in a trade down scenario. And if the Bears view it the same way, maybe trading down is what happens. But. I like Bijan Robinson, uh, and I'll give you a lot of reasons why I do as we progress through the show. There's obviously reasons why you would not want to draft Bijan also, uh, reasons that are certainly legitimate. But here's one thing for sure. The kid is productive as hell, and in terms of just being a good fit uh, off the field-wise, he's about as clean-cut of a guy as you're going to find. There's no red flags. Uh, I think he was a three-time all-academic guy at Texas as well. He's smart. He's smart good kid. He uh, used a lot of his NIL collective uh, to uh, do philanthropic stuff, I believe, in Austin as well. Uh, he checks all the boxes, both as a player and as a person. And when you're rebuilding a team, you want to rebuild with the right people and the right players. And Bijan Robinson checks both of those boxes, even if you consider running back a lesser position of need. So what do you guys think? We'll ask you this question at the end of the show as well, after I go through some pros and cons. Pen comment on today's episode. Would you draft Bijan Robinson at pick number nine? Would you take him number nine overall? Type D for draft or P for pass. Let me know in the comment section below. And after this YouTube ad break, we'll go through some pros and cons when it comes to Bijan Robinson. Three reasons to draft Bijan if you are the Chicago Bears. Number one, kind of simple, he's arguably the best player in the draft. We also said that about Jalen Carter. I would put Bijan Robinson in that, in that category. In terms of a pure football player in talent, regardless of position, Bijan is a top three player in this draft, I would say. And the Bears need blue chip players, and there's a very good chance Bijan becomes that in the NFL. Uh, he's the full package at running back. He can uh, hit the hit the uh, in between the tackles. He can bounce it. He can run you over. He can make people miss. He's a great jump cut back. Um, he catches the football well. Probably needs some uh, refinement in pass protection because Texas didn't ask him to do a ton of that. Roshan Johnson did more of it. But at the same time, uh, it's not like that's a major weakness in his game. He is a three down running back and a just stud at the running back position. Now, uh, when I mentioned blue chip players, the Bears don't have many of those, and even some of these guys aren't necessarily there yet. Like, Justin Fields is not a blue chip guy yet. He's got blue chip talent. He could reach that with his dual threat ability, cannon of an arm, and upside, but he's not there yet. DJ Moore, I would say, is a blue chip guy. He's not a top five receiver in the league, but he's a true number one, uh, but we haven't seen him in Chicago. Tremaine Edmonds, I'd put him there. He's 24, rising linebacker. Eddie Jackson, I would say, is close. I'd put him more in like the really good player category. Jalen Johnson, kind of the same deal. I think if he takes another step, he could get there, but the point being, you don't have that many, if any, true blue chip guys. You need five, seven, ten of those players to compete for Super Bowls, and getting a couple in this draft would certainly go a long way uh, to building that type of a roster. All right, reason number two to draft him. He's going to have an instant impact. Bijan Robinson from day one will have an impact on this football team or any football team that drafts him. You can lean on this kid. Like, you can take him and say, hey, you're our workhorse. Like, yeah, obviously if the Bears take him, they're going to use Khalil Herbert and Deontay Foreman would probably still have a role. Uh, but B. John Robinson would be your starting running back almost certainly. Now, maybe Herbert gets a chance to beat him out and maybe he does initially. But ideal, if you're taking a running back top 10 or even anywhere else in the first round, you are making him your lead back. And I think, quite frankly – 
uh, he should be a top 10 running back in the NFL from day one with the goal of him being a top five, top three running back uh, within the first couple of years of being in the league. Uh, today's show is sponsored by Fume. You got to kick those bad habits somehow. Fume's going to help you do so. Are you struggling with some bad habits? Cold turkey might be great for sandwiches, but there's a faster way to break free from those pesky habits, and it doesn't involve weird mind voodoo or other bizarre tactics. Fume is an innovative and award-nominated device that helps you kick bad habits to the curb by focusing on the good parts. Be sure to scan that QR code on your screen right now to learn more. Fume is all about embracing the natural. It's not electronic, and instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Best of all, it's free of harmful chemicals and packed with delicious, all-natural flavors. I love their flavors that are available with the Journey Pack. The adjustable air Flow dial and movable parts and magnets make it perfect for fidgeting, which can help alleviate stress and anxiety while you break your uh, habit. I wasn't sure what to expect at first, but I was pleasantly surprised by the taste, feel, and fume or look of fume. Breaking a habit can be tough at times, but with fume, it's easy, enjoyable, and it's even fun. With over a hundred thousand customers and countless success stories, there's no reason why you can't be next. So start your journey toward a healthier lifestyle today. Get 10% off with code Chat Sports by going to tryfume.com dot com slash chat sports it's this little device right here like you like i said you can fidget with it easy uh really easy to use comes in this nice box and you get the three unique flavors in the journey pack the white cranberry the maple pepper uh and the crisp mint i love the maple pe pepper that's personally my favorite tryfume.com slash chat sports code chat sports that's t-r-y-f-u-m.com slash chat sports code chat sports Get 10% off. Check the comments and the description for that link and promo code. Okay, uh, reason number three. He's a can't-miss prospect, right? When we talk about the uh, the draft every single year, we always talk about he's arguably the best player. He's, uh, you know, super talented. He's got all the tools. You hear all these cliche phrases, right? Well, at worst, he's a starting-level running back, in my opinion. He's bust-proof. Like, yeah, like, when you're taking a running back high, you want him to be elite, elite, which is, you know, a con that we'll talk about. If he's not that, it's probably not worth the pick. Uh, but, uh, again, at worst, the Texas running back here, he's a starting caliber back for five years on a rookie deal. Uh, at best, he's a superstar and takes your offense to another level. And I think there's a really good chance that happens compared to the former where he's kind of just starting caliber, you know, a top 15 back in the NFL. But he's got the tools to be so much more. Five... 5'11", over 200 pounds, mid 4'4", 40 guy, catches the ball well. He can run routes. I mean, he's just so dynamic in the open field, uh, and he's physical as well. So uh, I don't think there's any chance at all, barring injuries, that uh, he uh, were to bust in the NFL. Subscribe to the channel. NFL Draft Buzz is heating up, and we will be live for all three days of the NFL Draft. Not necessarily every pick, uh, but we will be live uh, on all three days at some point. Most of day one, I would say, uh, a good chunk of day two with the Bears having a few picks in there, then a lot of day three as well. So subscribe, hit that notification bell, turn on those noties to make sure uh, you know when we go live. That way you don't miss any of our coverage. We're going to have some fun, good analysis, play some games. Join us, youtube.com slash bears now. Okay, with pros in life, there are cons. Uh, reasons to not draft Bijan. The Bears simply have bigger needs. They do. I mean, there, there's just no doubt about it. All five of these positions and probably a couple others are bigger needs than running back right now. Offensive tackle. Uh, you've got Braxton Jones, who's your left tackle for now. He could move to right, but you need another tackle. You don't really have another one unless you think Larry Borum's going to figure it out or if you're going to kick Tevin Jenkins back out there. And if you kick Jenkins out there, then you need a guard. Uh, edge. I mean, you need multiple edges. Let's just call it what it is. You don't. Demarcus Walker is okay. Rasheem Green, okay. I think they're solid players, but you need more defensive tackle, especially three tech. That's a must. Uh, cornerback, I think you need a CB two opposite of Jalen Johnson with Kyler Gordon in the nickel, and then center. Uh, even if you don't draft someone to start this year. After 2024 you or 2023, you don't really have an answer there unless Cody Whitehair is going to play the next two years for you there, which seems unlikely. So all those needs are bigger than a running back. So that is a reason to pause and be like, hmm, is it worth taking a running back number nine overall here? Uh, and quite frankly, you don't even have to draft a single running back. Now, I would. I would take a back at some point in this draft because it's such a deep back with talent. But if you went into week one with Khalil Herbert, Deontay Foreman, and Travis Homer with 
Bakari Blazing Game is your fullback. Maybe Ebner makes the team as well. It's a solid RB room. It's not incredible, uh, but Herbert is a starting caliber back. He's proven that when David Montgomery's been banged up. Uh, Deontay Foreman played awesome last year. Uh, he can carry the load, and Travis Homer's a good scat back. So you can roll with what you got. Doesn't mean you shouldn't draft Bijan. It just goes to show, like, if you want to draft blue chip talent but also fill more important needs, you can certainly go in a different direction than Bijan Robinson. Should the Bears draft for need or best player available. I'm very much a BPA guy, especially where the Bears are in their rebuild right now. You can get a little bit pickier when your roster gets into better shape, but uh, I would certainly take best player, which is why I'm not going to rule out drafting Bijan with the number nine pick. All right, uh, another reason to pass on Bijan. Uh, lower impact position. It kind of ties into A, the Bears have bigger needs, and B, running back is not a position viewed by most teams as one of major importance. Right, like this is not the early 2000s where uh, you're going to give the ball 30 times a game to somebody unless unless you have that guy, right? And maybe Bijan's that. Derrick Henry is that. Jonathan Taylor can ha has kind of been that, but that's kind of the dilemma here, right? Bijan's a special talent, and if he's among the best uh, running backs in the NFL, it's worth it. Like if he comes in and he's a top five running back for a rookie contract, and maybe you tag him to get a sixth year out of him. That's worth it, right? Because he's going to help your offense and help Justin Fields take another step. But if he's just like a really good player, like say he's like the 10th best running back in the league, that's not worth taking a top 10 pick on. Like if he's Joe Mixon, you don't want to draft Joe Mixon in the, with the number nine overall pick. Good player. He's going to help you. But the value just doesn't add up. In that scenario, he's not worth it. If he's unbelievable, if he's blue chip, yeah, then it's worth it. But if he's not, that's the hesitation here. Okay, and then number three, and maybe the most important, this draft is loaded with running backs. Sure, there's no other Bijans. There's one Bijan, but there's guys you can get in the second round I like, third round, even fourth and fifth. Like, there's day three guys that you can plug and play as rotation backs right away. There really are. I mean, these are ten guys beyond Bijan, and there's more than this that I like that I would give – legitimate playing time to from day one. Jameer Gibbs, he might even sneak into the first round, but if he's there at 53, whew, I'm interested. Same with Devin A. Chain in that 53 to 64 range where you have three picks. Charbonnet as well. Kendra Miller, I think, is a third round type of guy. If you trade down and get an extra third, keep an eye on him. Ty J. Spears is a good player. Roshan Johnson, the other Texas back who is really appealing because he's got less mileage. Like, bijan has been carrying the load there, so Roshan uh, might even last an extra year or two. You never know. Zach Jack Evans uh, is a guy that I think has starting potential. Tank Bigsby uh, out of Auburn. He's a really physical runner between the tackles. Israel Ibataconda out of Pitt. I like him. Chase Brown out of Illinois, the local kid. He's a plug-and-play guy that uh, it, it has really good contact balance. Like The point is, there's really good running backs, rounds two through five in this draft, that you can find that could either eventually start or at least be rotation players for you. So there you have it. You kind of break it all down here, all on your screen here. Bijan to Chicago, pros versus cons. Again, the pros are he's arguably the best pure player in this draft. He will no doubt have an instant impact on this offense, and he's a can't-miss prospect. Again, at worst, he's starting caliber. At best, he's special as hell, uh, maybe a 1,500-yard guy. Cons, uh, Bears have bigger needs. Offensive line, defensive line, corner, uh, a couple other spots. Lower impact position, he's not going to be a 12-year player. Uh, you know, if you draft a running back, chances are you're not going to give him a second contract because they wear down quicker. Uh, and then, again, this draft is loaded with running backs, so you don't have to force the issue here. But, again, if you are Ryan Poles and you're going best player available and you're trying to add blue chip talent, you cannot rule out the possibility of drafting B. John Robinson with your first pick. So what say you? There you have it. We'll ask again, would you draft Bijan at pick number nine? Y for yes, N for no, or D for draft, P for pass? I want to hear it from you guys in the comments section below, and we'll see you guys soon here on Bears Now.